Hello everyone, welcome back to Breaking the Clutch. My name is Slick and I'm here with the first episode of Halo Icons, the show where we revisit countless missions, maps, and moments that make Halo special. With Halo 6 and Everlong in production, it's really important that we look back on all the things that kept us glued to our controllers every day. As we upload Halo content daily, we're incredibly excited to share these moments with you. I ask you to sit back and relax as we here at BTC give you a weekly dose of Halo happiness. Be sure to subscribe to our channel if you enjoy, and in the comments below, tell us your favorite and least favorite part of the episode. When we think of moments that made Halo an incredible experience, it's hard not to mention the Maw. With a final mission as exciting and stressful as the end of Halo CE, it's quite easy to point to it as one of the most iconic missions in Halo history. However, we have to remember that it wasn't all warthog jumps and splatter sprees. There were many other factors that played into the fantastic creation that is the final mission of Halo CE. Upon beginning the last mission of the first Halo campaign, we are overcome with sadness. We've been through it all. The death of our crew, the discovery of the Flood and what they do, the brutal end of our captain, a close call with destroying the universe, all to end up here. As the camera slow pans the charred carcass of the Pillar of Autumn, we let it sink in just how stacked the odds are against us. We've really got nothing left but ourselves and an easily faulty plan to destroy the Halo super weapon. As our broken home sits upon a massive cliff, it symbolizes just how close to death we really are. This mixed bag of emotions seems to be overall negative, but still manages to encourage tinges of hopefulness. Just as we are reminded how terrible everything is, we see the Chief pull a prank on Cortana. The moment sort of snaps the player back into reality that things aren't over, not yet. I remember thinking during this cutscene, the soft, somber music to add to the sadness of seeing the crashed autumn, and even before the mission starts, you're reminded how things come full circle. This is where the story began, right here on the Pillar of Autumn, and now this is where it's about to end. And I love like how much, like uh, how ominous they made the Pillar of Autumn as well. It's fucking, it's super frightening in like a lot of ways. Fear is definitely something they were shooting for, you know? Yeah, especially when the flood just exp like, blow up doors, purge at you turn the corner you've got flood carriers sitting at the end of the hallway stepping into the pillar of autumn we conclude that things are just as bad as they seem the inside of our ship is more tarnished and charred than the exterior you get the massive sense of loneliness and empty feelings again i remember shooting the first flood forms and thinking these were probably crew members once and i thought about how all of the humans on the ring were dead and or just about to be dead the developers purposefully make us walk the same corridors we walked in the first mission to feel and breathe the decay our first objective is to get to the bridge, the very place we get our first weapon and meet the captain of the ship. Pay attention to the number of coming full circle moments I'll point out in this video. A mixture of grunts standing where a captain once stood with fuel rod cannons and they explode, it's just, it's kind of sad. You see all the monitors, they're cracked. We place Cortana right back into the terminal we originally found her and she begins the countdown. She is about to blow up our house. Typically, 343 Guilty Spark, aka the galaxy's most annoying light bulb, stops our plan and causes us to figure something else out. I love this moment too. I, lo I love Cortana's like, Cortana's like, I don't know what to do. And like, Chief's like, well, what else do we do when we can't figure anything else out? <laughs> we fucking throw grenades at it and figure it out. Look at how massive that oh, grenade yeah. is. I love this, because you know, it's kind of like, everyone's just like, yep, the badassery is about to begin. In order to get to the room with the reactors, we have to track our way back through a familiar setting. Uh, it's literally a setting right next to a familiar setting. It's a setting that looks the same as what we've already experienced, and I think the developers do this on purpose. We were in Cryo Room A, and what we end up going back to is Cryo Room B. It's after we go through a cafeteria, which we also already fought our way through in the first mission. We're fighting our way through it again at the end of the game. It's a very unique way of handling a situation. You see the two extremes, you get a little bit of nostalgia from going back into the place you already were, and then, of course, you do get a little bit of a better experience and a sad experience at the same time. All these emotions running through your head, be essentially just because there's so much going on and you're just back to the place where you originally began. So you turn around and shoot and 46 shotgun shells, six grenades later, and there's at least a dozen more Flood and Sentinels and they come frequently and you're walking through the same exact corridors and hallways that you originally did on the first mission, back again on the horse you rode in on. And once you kill them all, you think, this is my reward for saving the galaxy. And so after that whole ordeal, we continue to make our way into engineering. Engineering is a place where we get our first look at a new challenge at hand. You have a combination of jump skill 
a combination of parkour, a combination of accuracy with grenades, combination of being able to search and loot out enemy bodies in order to get more weaponry. It's all a fantastic gaming environment, and it's all about you and the skill that you learned. The developers purposefully designed the room of engineering to be difficult so that you could prove to everyone, and mostly yourself, and by everyone I mean all of the flood and sentinel carcasses you're about to leave around, you proved to yourself, wow, I've really done a lot, and I am a super badass, suited up, super soldier. And they do a wonderful job of making you feel like you are in the chief's suit. This is the most confusing room in the Pillar of Autumn. Never, I don't understand it. And it's probably just a simple layout, but... Exactly, right? It's like we feel you don't the same have that top-down view. Use the controls on the third floor to act... Okay, yeah, we know that. But this is like this is what makes these old games so fantastic is oh, like again. that level of like investigation that you have to do, you know what I mean? Like you can't you can't just float your way through the mission and just hope to figure it out. Like like I said, it's you have linear tasks but a very non-linear way to do them. Yeah, specifically with all the doors and the routes that you can take. Yeah. You can get lost very easily, which um as the player experience i just remember getting so frustrated with uh this mission and uh, pillar of autumn i believe is what it was called the very first mission mm -hmm. in general just because i would always get lost you'd turn the corner you'd go into a room you've never been sentinels were there or flood were there and then you would turn around again and you're like that was not where i needed to go at all so that was just irrelevant it was meant to kill me now is when the fun starts happening. In order to progress through the room, you actually have to activate four separate control panels, which activate four separate turbines, which activate four separate vents that open and close periodically, which you then have to place four grenades into said vents in order to blow said reactors and progress on with the mission. Oh, and I forgot to mention that you're also running around from about 400 flood forms and about 200 sentinels. And on top of everything with the cherry, I would say that that would be our little blue friend, 343 Guilty Spark, flying around humming and causing your auto aim to miss your rocket shots every now and again. Uh, you are able to shoot rockets into the vents, so therefore I am clearly complaining, but if you're like me and are very impatient, you have likely tried to just quickly find four frag grenades and throw them perfectly into the vents. And if you are also like me, you know that that is certainly not the most effective way to do it. Honestly, this room is more full of annoyance than anything else. Uh, it's good annoyance though, you know, it's, it's, it's the first mission in the game where you actually can't just sprint through, in my opinion. Not the first, but one of them. And you really have to kind of figure your way out around it. You have to fumble your way. The room seems very poorly designed at some sometimes and you get mad at yourself but it, when you beat it and you beat that annoyance and you destroy it and you move on from that room and you hear the explosions behind you there are not very many things out there that beat that feeling of accomplishment so after you've destroyed all the autumn's reactors and you're walking away from the explosions like a cliche super badass you're treated with a momentary elevator brake ride during this quick breather if you could even call it that as you ascend to the upper parts of the pillar of autumn Everything is blowing up and exploding around you, and Cortana is casually talking over the intercoms to our only surviving friend, Echo419, and she's telling her that the autumn is going critical, and we need to be picked up at a certain location, a very desolate one. Surprisingly, I remember playing this moment and being like, wow, Echo's still alive? That's absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe that Echo419 has survived it this long. She's been like the one consistent friend. Love hearing her chatter on the comms. Whenever you're on Death Island, you're moving along. Uh, silent Cartographer, especially fantastic mission, experiencing Echo419. And it's amazing that she's still alive. Not to mention, as our entire ship is blowing up, we have a time limit. It's the first time it's happened in this Halo game, and it's six minutes long. Is, and depending on which difficulty you're playing, and we have to reach the other side of our massive, endlessly long ship. Luckily, we've had several vehicle missions to prepare us for what's to come. As soon as we pass through the massive gateway, we enter a Warthog vehicle bay, and boom, several of them already explode. <laughs> it's like, just to add to the already high tension, it's absolutely ridiculous. We pick our hog and leave the bay only to drive right into the firefight between the Covenant and the Flood. If you were as unlucky as I was, one of the fuel rods would explode as you ran over a grunt, flipping the vehicle into yourself, killing you, and then you'd be forced to go back. Be careful with this one though, because if you do die, you will be forced all the way back to the Warthog Bay, where you will begin your run again. And that means even if you get to the very end of this run and you die, you will be forced back into the Warthog, meeting essentially that you have to one-time it. 
So that means that you have to be super careful and learn the sticks. If you're not good with the pedals and the steering wheel, now is a good time to figure it out. Cue the music, we start the log hog run, and race against time. We've got a long way to go before we reach the end. Before us, a massive corridor with the obstacles in our way, different paths we could take. There's uh, downs, there's ups, you can go down through tunnels, you can hit jumps. Most of the time, you're spending a lot of your seconds ticking down the clock, crashing into walls, little tiny ledges, flipping your warthog over, getting shot by flood forms, shade turrets, whatever, you name it. I'd say about 70% of it is warthog riding, the other 30% is annoying uselessness that, uh, you know, was entirely caused by you and your inability to drive a warthog. It's gonna Dude, tell the sway you. on these hogs is killer. <laughs> yeah. But my god, are they not so fun to drive, though? That's such they're fun part because they're so difficult. Yeah. After going through your first hangar, doing a massive turn into the next, and having about 600 meters to go, the question comes up, how big is this ship? And after about another minute, we finally reach our destination, so that way we can get picked up by Echo 419, and it's so great because she can pick us up, fly us into space, and then we have an easy getaway. But when she gets there though, the pelican is already on fire. She flies around the corner into this long hallway in the middle exposed section of the Pillar of Autumn, and she's on fire. Echo 419 utters her last words in this moment, and we have finally lost our last friend on the entire Halo ring. The entire Halo experience has come down to just Cortana, the Master Chief, and Echo 419, and we lose our one friend left. This is kind of the important moment where we realize as players, despite all the action and craziness going on, that there is epic loss in this game. Every single person on the Pillar of Autumn, even the Pillar of Autumn itself, will be dead by the time we get our way off this ring. And even then, the one escape plan that we had after the one attack plan that we had have both failed. And we've once again have to figure out our way to get out of the ship. but Cortana snaps us out of it and tells us to keep moving. There's not time left. There's a long sword still in a bay, our last chance of escaping the ring. Once again, we get a second plan and we start executing it. To get his pump back up after the sad moment, the epic Halo track that we all know and love kicks back in with its epic drum beat. So now we know we have to punch it. Driving through the last of the exploding corridors, we reach the hangar that we first saw in the beginning cutscene. The very first cutscene, once again coming back full circle, but with convenient barrels in our way, you are forced to jump out and make a final sprint to the longsword. Because there's usually about a minute left. So you're completely stressed out, you're sweating buckets at this point, you got the headband on, there's explosions left and right, plasma shots being shot between Flood and Covenant. There is not much left for you except just to run. The one time that you don't shoot your way out, you run your way out. You run up the ramp and into the final cutscene. Now you can finally kick back and relax with the Halo Ring exploding right behind you as you drift off into outer space as Master Chief utters the perfect situational ending phrase to Halo CE. I think we're just getting started. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. My name is Slick. I really hope you enjoyed. A big shouts out to Awesome56, our BTC Discord admin, for the assist on scripting this video. Uh, we are certainly looking for more suggestions for Halo icons. Now, when I think of a Halo icon, it doesn't have to be a mission. It can be literally anything that you think is iconic in Halo. If you think a certain character is iconic, you think a map is from any of your favorite Halo games, missions especially, whatever you believe, and game types even, it doesn't matter to me. I think there are so many different bits of Halo icons that it really, it's, it's impossible to do in one video to name all the things. That's why I decided to do series on this and I'm going to be tackling uh, different Halo icons until the release of Halo 6 because we got a long road guys, it's, uh, it's not going to happen overnight. So if you did stick around in the end, please let me know in the comment section below if you did stick to the end and tell me what your favorite part was. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited for this series and hope that uh, hope that we can really make an impact with this. If you did enjoy, please leave a like on the video as well. And if you're not yet subscribed, subscribe to us for more Halo content as we're going to keep uploading Halo vids every day. Thank you guys so much for watching. Slick from Breaking the Clutch. We'll see you guys next time.
All right, so this. Oh my god! Oh my god! No! Oh, dude! I, oh, look! I lived. Dude, where the hell are you? I lived. Oh Jesus! Oh! Oh! Whoa! Oh my god! No. It knocked me! It knocked me off! What the actual?